Hey Pretty Girl Club, welcome back to the Decentering Men series. I am finally catching up on editing, so I am now able to do my Decentering Men Spectrum Part 3. Be sure to watch all of my Decentering Men content because I do believe that, like everything, Decentering Men is not a black and white issue. I believe that it exists on a spectrum. So if you look at this chart here, this is actually the chart that I'm going off of because when I Googled decentering men, this is literally just the image that popped up. So I've noticed that for some women, men are not going to be in the circle at all. You know, so this is where you get kind of like the Princella, the queen makers. By the way, she has some very, she has some excellent talking points on her channel. Say what you want, but you cannot deny the talking points that she brings up on there. So for some women, you don't want men in the circle at all. So that could be the women who watch Princella, the women who are a part of the 4B movement. And then there are people who are still on the decentering men's spectrum because they're not male centered. They've actually centered something else. And what a man does is he is almost like a means to an end. So it doesn't necessarily mean that she is using the man, although in some cases she will be because you know, some women are sex workers, sugar babies or whatever, but there are some women who have decided to put something else at the center of their identity. The first thing you want to ask yourself is if I'm decentering men, what do I put at the center of my life? Because there is something at the center. So I know that for me, as far as what I center my life and my identity around, it's my physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health. That is my number one priority. Anything that gets in the way of that is going to be eliminated. So if it's a man, it's going to be eliminated. If it's a job, it'll be eliminated. So that's the first thing that I feel every woman should ask herself. Number two, decentering men is not a competition. I've noticed that there are some jealous content creators out there who are upset that I have created excellent content about decentering men. And so then they try to come in and they try to make it as if decentering men is supposed to be a competition when in reality they're just mad because they're not good at discussing this topic. So you can still have pretty privilege and be decentered from men. In my opinion, Shira Seven, Princella the Queenmaker, and myself have all decentered men in different ways. So for example, look at Shira Seven. She's actually married and she has children, but I personally would not call Shira male-centered because she says all the time on her channel that she cares about getting her bags and you know doing what she loves and starting her own business. And so when I think of the term male-centered, I think of a woman who has no boundaries. I think of a woman who is very desperate and almost fetishizing and pedestalizing men above herself. So I do feel like some of the women in the cringy part of the divestment movement fall into this. Um, I feel like women who are very male-centered would be the types of women who insult you based on how men treat you. So these are the women who say things like, oh, you got the same black man, or, oh, I guess your pretty privilege didn't work because look how that man treats you. So they're associating privilege with how a man treats you. So their definition of privilege literally means black men treat you better or so-and-so men treat you better. And so one of the critiques that I've received on this channel is that because I talk about pretty privilege or because I make jokes about people calling us preferences as an insult, and you know, we take back that insult. People have tried to say that this channel is male centered and like everything we do on here is just male centered. And actually the fact that people associate your beauty with being male centered, that actually shows that they are male centered because anyone who understands psychology, sociology, or economics knows that beauty exists outside of the male gaze. Sunsets are beautiful, whether a man is looking at them or not. The beach is beautiful, whether there's a man looking at it or not. Babies are beautiful, and I would hope that a man is not lusting after a baby and gazing after a baby. So the fact that I talk about beauty on here and I talk about um, pretty privilege and stuff, all of those things are simply a form of social power. And so depending on where you are on the decentering men spectrum, you can utilize that social power any way you want. And so let's talk about the male gaze for a second. So the women who are a part of the 4B movement, that would be like if I said, oh, you know, Princella, you're being male centered because you're wearing makeup and makeup is attractive to men. It's like, well, no, people can still look pretty and look cute and be doing it for themselves. They can still 
express their creativity or express their fashion and their style in a way that has nothing to do with attracting a man because beauty is still a form of social power. Presenting yourself in a creative way or expressing yourself in a certain way is something that can still influence another person's perception of you. So whenever I talk about pretty privilege on here, whenever I talk about social power, this is more so a survival tactic for women. This is more so um, about how to survive in a society that has sometimes used patriarchy like against women. It's basically how to become an op in the patriarchy and then utilize what you have so that you can do what's best for you or your family. Another part of the decentering men spectrum, in my opinion, is that decentering men is more of a lifestyle. It's more of a journey. I don't view it as a destination. Like, oh, okay, if somebody is gay, then that means that they are higher up on decentering men versus somebody who's straight. Well, no, because I feel like every single person has different goals. And I know that for me, what my goal was with going on my decentering journey, my goal was to attain more mental health. Because I told you guys, that's what I put at the center of my identity. It's really my mental, physical, and spiritual and emotional health. And so for me, decentering men was incredible because it helped to free my mind of clutter. Um, I wasn't thinking about marriage or relationships and stuff like that. I was no longer ashamed of my past because I've noticed that a lot of women when they want to humble you, they will try to use your relationship status as a humbling tactic. They will say, oh, well, no man wants you or you can't keep a man. Or they'll say you got the same black man. You know, they'll make fun of you if you got domestically abused. They will make fun of you if your kids got assaulted. They'll make fun of you if you were with a guy who's a quote unquote dusty. And so decentering men actually helps you so that those insults no longer hold any weight. Another thing that I've noticed is that a lot of people view all of these talking points online, they're starting to view it like a cult because they have very black and white thinking. These are the types of people that don't understand nuance. And so when you say decentering men, they automatically think of one part of the decentering men spectrum. And so they kind of put you in this box and they feel like, well, if you do any sort of dating at all, then you must be somehow male centered. And to that person, you know, maybe that's valid for them because in their experience, anytime they've been in a relationship, maybe it did become more male centered, which by the way, I understand this. I think that every woman has had her phase of being a pick me or, you know, she's had her phase of like being very male centered. So I actually don't shame women for that. Um, but something else that I've noticed is that when it comes to the decentering men spectrum, people start trying to shame women who are not on the same spectrum as them. So for example, you've got married women who are shaming unmarried women. You've got sex workers who are shaming mothers. You've got child free women who are shaming single mothers. And I just feel like wasn't the whole point like we were supposed to just have options as women. Um, because the way that I view it is that women should not be a monolith. I mean, if you want to have kids, have kids. If you don't want to have kids, don't. If you want to get married, get married. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But I feel like anytime women start these new conversations online, there's always some content creator trying to come in and police what people are doing. And then, and they will try to say like, Oh, if you don't do X, Y, Z, then you're male centered. And it's like, well, no, that's actually a personal decision that that woman gets to make for herself. And in my personal life, decentering men is really about taking back my own social power. It's about taking back my autonomy over my own body. It's about taking back my authority over the way that I, um, operate in my beauty because I know that for me personally back when my beauty standards were more male centered I actually used to dress more modestly because a lot of men and women they would say you know you want to dress like a wife you want to dress like you are wifey material and so my internalized beauty standard was actually male centered so a part of my personal decentering men journey was to start dressing how I wanted to dress and not being afraid of men thinking that, oh, I'm looking slutty or men thinking that I shouldn't be wearing mini skirts or I, I can't show cleavage because then men won't take me seriously. That was a part of my decentering journey. And so before you judge another woman's decentering journey, you have to remember that 
her experiences aren't going to actually be the same as yours. The reason that she dresses a certain way, it may not be the same reasons that you're dressing that way. For some women, they do wear uh, revealing clothing because they want a man's attention. So I understand that there are women who do that. But then there were women like me who in the past, they would not wear revealing clothing because they were trying to get a man's attention. So do you see how either way you technically could have still been male-centered? And also, I've noticed that there are some content creators who will come online and brag about how decentered they are, as if being the most decentered woman in the world somehow makes you higher in social status. And I mean, I guess if, if that's what you want to flex, then by all means do that. Um, but I kind of feel like that's a weird flex because decentering men is not a competition. I, I thought that the whole concept was. This is supposed to be a personal journey. It's supposed to be about you. And in my opinion, I really do believe that any woman of any relationship status can go on a journey where she's no longer centering her husband, her boyfriend, I don't know, her sons, her father. And so I don't look at it like there's this hierarchy and, you know, the single child free woman, she is the most decentered or a lesbian woman is the most decentered or a woman who, who transitions into a man, she's the most decentered or a woman who's a nun, she's the most decentered. The sugar baby, the sex worker, she's the most decentered. I really do my best not to practice hierarchy thinking. And I think that unfortunately for a lot of us women, because we have been conditioned to be in this hierarchy mindset, and it was it was taught to us by men, if we're honest, um, but because we've been conditioned this way, sometimes I feel like we allow that hierarchy thinking to get into our own spaces for women. Another thing that I've seen online is people will be like, oh, if you're gonna decenter men, don't talk about it, just do it. And it's like, well, no, that's your rule that you put on yourself. You can't talk about decentering men. I can talk about whatever I wanna talk about on my YouTube channel. Other women have the freedom of speech. Decentering men doesn't mean that I lose my freedom of speech and that I can't talk about the things that I'm passionate about or the things that have helped my self-esteem. So once again, People who talk about that, it just sounds like jealous content creators who are upset that there are other content creators who are getting views and subscribers by discussing decentering men. So of course they're going to say, oh, just be quiet. Just stop talking about it. Well, yeah, because they don't want people to watch your YouTube channel because they feel like you are their competitor. But as you're watching this, I want you to ask yourself this question. What does decentering men look like for you? How does that manifest in your own personal life? Is there any aspect of yourself that you have been suppressing because you are afraid of what a man thinks of you. Um, I know that for me, it's actually really hilarious because I used to be very anti-beauty enhancement. I used to be very anti-plastic surgery, uh, very anti, I didn't even wear bikinis and stuff because I, I personally came from a very religious, very Christian background. And so I was in a very male-centered, very patriarchal religion. By the way, if you're a Christian, you're probably going to be offended by this video, so you should probably click off now. Um, so for me, as soon as I went on my personal decentering men journey, I became pro beauty enhancement, you know, so now I, I enjoy makeup more. I enjoy hair extensions or wearing bikinis and wearing shorts. I never really wore shorts when I was growing up, partially because of my male pastors and the men around me who would tell me like, oh no, that's what Jezebels wear. Or like, you know, you're trying to seduce a man. You're trying to like be sexy for men. And so Another thing that happens with male-centered spaces is they will try to police your beauty and they want to police how you use your beauty or they will shame you. They'll shame you for being old. I noticed that's another uh, male-centered talking point. Oh, you hit the wall, that sort of talking point. You don't have as many options as when you were 25 because your value goes down as you age. Well, that may be true for women who are male-centered or women who care about a man's opinion, but I'm very proud of aging. I think aging is a beautiful process. I think that aging is a blessing. And so your personal decentering men journey is gonna look different than the next person's. Women are not a monolith. There are some women who are very male-centered when it comes to their careers. There are other women who are male-centered when it comes to their beauty standard. Um, there are some women who are very male-centered, obviously in terms of relationships. They feel like they have no option but to get married because their only pathway to financial freedom is if they are married or they feel like 
um, the only way for their children to be mentally healthy is if they are married. So my YouTube channel is more controversial in the sense that I believe that two things can be true at the same time. So I believe that there are some parents who are single mothers who can still provide a good life for their children. And I also believe there could be women who are married who can still provide a good life for their children. In my opinion, it's all about the individual. So this is why my channel promotes introspection because you have to ask yourself, what do I want out of life? Um, if I am decentering men, what does that mean for me? Does that mean that men are completely out of the circle altogether? Meaning that I never interact with a man ever again. You know, I'm going to be a nun. I'm going to become asexual. I'm going to become LGBT. By the way, I'm not shaming either of those things. I, I fully promote and support both of those communities. I personally practice celibacy. If I'm not in a relationship, I am going to be celibate because I don't even believe in casual sex myself. So I don't shame women, even if they are gonna spend the rest of their lives being asexual and stuff. But I've noticed that even when it comes to the whole decentering men thing, sometimes I will see women online where they will shame women for dating or something, or they'll be like, oh, well, you must be male-centered because you have a boyfriend. Oh, you're, she or seven must be male-centered because she's married. And it's like, well, technically you don't live in her psyche. And so for me, as a person who studies psychology and sociology, I understand that I can't read other people's minds. I mean, sure, I can look at their life and I can say for myself, okay, I don't want to live a life like that, but I really can't assume that I know everything they're thinking. Different women have different goals. And for some women, a man is a means to an end. For other women, uh, their ultimate goal is to get married or something like that. Uh, then there are women like me who feel like every woman has the right to have options. Okay, so marriage, optional. Having children, optional. Having sex with men, optional. All of this stuff is optional. You don't have to fit into a certain mold just so you can prove to other women that you're not male-centered or just so you can prove to a man, you know, that you are centering him. And also, let's talk about that. So if you look up the definition of the word center, it is the point from which an activity or process is directed or on which it's focused. It means that things occur mainly in or around a specified place. So to decenter men, that means that you are not focusing all of your activities around a man. You know, you're not focusing your whole life around a man. It means that a man is not, you're not revolving yourself around a man. You're not revolving your beauty standard, your internalized beauty standard around a man. So my definition of decentering men was always you take them out of the center of the circle. And like I said, for some women, you will take men completely out of the circle and that's okay. My YouTube channel is set up to be like more of a think tank or it's more like a library. So consider my channel to be a library and consider every single video that I make to be a different separate book on its own topic. Because sometimes, you know, I have 600 videos on here now. So some of my videos, you may look at them and be like, oh, why are you talking about 4B movement? But then you're also talking about this other topic. Well, it's because my content is supposed to be like a library. That would be like going to a library and then saying, why do you have science books? And then why do you also have feminism books? You're not allowed to have two of those things in one place. And it's like, well, yes, you are. I mean, that's a part of being intellectual. You know how to play around with other ideas. And for me, as the content creator, I'm here to provide you with information. And by the way, I fully support and embrace the decentering men movement. It is something that has changed my life. Um, I didn't realize that I was male-centered or that I had some male-centered mindsets until a few years ago. And so I'm really glad and very grateful, actually, that I learned about things like what a starter wife is, what a married single mother is, you know, the psychology of 50-50 relationships. So all of this content has value. And also, just because you don't agree with everything that I do or say, or you don't agree with everything that a particular YouTuber does or says, that doesn't negate their talking points. It doesn't negate the truth that they have told you. So I would hope that nobody's coming on the internet blindly believing everything a person says. I, would re I really hope that nobody is dumb enough to do that. And so as with everything, you're supposed to take it with a grain of salt. You're supposed to eat the meat and spit out the bones. And just remember that the main women who try to shame you the most and say that you're the most male-centered, usually those women are not only male-centered themselves, but usually they're actually jealous of some aspect of you, and that's really why they're mad. So one of the questions you want to ask yourself about men in general is, 
am I open to anything about a man or am I completely closed off? Um, so I don't want any male friends, no boyfriend, nothing. Or am I in a state of my life where I'm taking a break? Because that's something that I also promote. Taking mental health breaks. Anything that gets in the way of my mental health, I need to either take a break from it or get rid of it completely. And also another way that I feel like women can decenter men is to not change their schedule. Never change your schedule up in hopes that some guy will ask you out or something. Or, you know, changing your schedule up just so you can go meet up with a guy. And then making sure that you keep your goals first. Making sure that you keep yourself at the center. Yes, I'm telling you to be more self-centered. Because I feel like a lot of women have been socialized to be very sacrificial. A lot of us have been socialized to um, get picked. And a lot of women have actually valued themselves based off of the type of man they can attract. Like I see women, they'll make fun of you if your husband is poor and then they will pedestalize you and praise you or they'll be jealous of you if your husband is rich and white or something like that. So I don't really like that mindset. I actually feel like putting women on a hierarchy based on their relation to a man, that is still a male-centered thought process in my opinion. But I just feel like your own decentering men journey is something that's very personal. Um, so you get to decide the boundaries around what you think about this. So are you going to talk about this with your friends? Um, are men something that you no longer talk about? Because one of my newfound boundaries is that even if I am seeing a guy or if I'm in a relationship, my boundary is that I do not discuss my relationships or make it a topic of conversation every time I'm out with my friends or every time I'm out with my family because I want to be able to enjoy other aspects of my life. Like that's a form of decentering it for me because there really are some women who can't have a conversation without gossiping about men, without strategizing about how to get a man, without talking shit about somebody else's man, without talking about their man. And so each woman is going to have her own individual thought process on how she wants to go about decentering men. And so this channel, I really do my best not to shame people. I will say though, with my decentering men content, one of my agendas is to depedestalize marriage in particular. Um, I'm not saying that I'm against marriage because if you want marriage, you should get married. But I do feel like that is still a very big stronghold that a lot of women have over their lives, especially when it comes to women of color or women who are financially underprivileged. I feel like a lot of women are desperate for marriage because they think that marriage will save them from their financial woes, and usually it's not going to. So that's one of my goals with this channel, is to not shame women who are not married, and it is to kind of level out the playing field and try to balance out the talking points as much as I can. But what do you ladies think? Let me know in the comment section, and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty, ladies.